My next guest was nominated for an Academy Award for his portrayal of Lieutenant Dan in the 1994 blockbuster Forrest Gump. He's also an Emmy winner, a family man, a bassist in his own rock band, and founder of his own foundation working on behalf of our nation's fighting men and women. I sat down with Gary Sinise at the Gary Sinise Foundation offices in Southern California and we talked about his career, what inspired him to take up the concerns of veterans, and the work that has become the focus of his life. Here's my interview with Gary Sinise. Gary, I want to start with your acting career because there's a nice tie-in. Really, the theater and film gave way to this, what's become your life's work. Tell me a little bit about how you stumbled into the theater in high school. Um, well, I, I, I was playing in a, in a band, in a rock band in high school. And um, they, uh, this, uh, I was standing in this hallway w with the members of my band, and we looked pretty scruffy, I think. And uh, the drama teacher, this little lady, this powerhouse oh. kind of tornado of a lady, walked down the hallway. She turned around. And she said, come and audition for West Side Story. <laughs> you look perfect for the gang members. <laughs> and uh, then she pedaled off. And, and I had just seen the movie of West Side Story or something. Oh. or. Actually, I was in a, a different high school when I was a freshman than a sophomore, mm. and at the other high school, they had done West Side Story. That's what it oh, was. Oh, so you and were I familiar saw it, with it. And then I moved, and I, it's my sophomore year, and now my new high school is going to do that play. Mm. Then right after high school, you and two of your friends find what's become now an institution, Steppenwolf Theater Company. And you found it, you started in a church basement. Yes. Um, so I did my first play as a sophomore. It was West Side Story, and I met Jeff Perry, who was he played Tony in the show, and we became fast friends. We did a lot of plays in high school together. And after I graduated, I, with some of the kids, started this theater. And uh, Jeff uh, was at college, and he met this buddy, and they became fast friends, so Terry Kinney, and. <laughs> We were doing this theater up in Highland Park, Illinois, and they were down in, in the central Illinois, at mm -hmm. Illinois State, and I said, come up for the summer and do a play with us. So they oh. came up, the three of us bonded, and we said we were going to make a go at uh, starting uh, a real company when they got out of college, which mm -hmm. we did. And <laughs> that became Steppenwolf Theater back in the origins uh, were 1974, and then uh, we started that group mm -hmm. um, in 1976, and ironically, there, I was looking for a space in Highland Park, Illinois, that we could do this in, and there was a Catholic school that had closed down. Huh. The parish was there, but the, the, school, the school had was closed. closed. And there was a basement of this place that the youth commissioner in this town knew about, because they had used it for like a yeah. teen center. Mm -hmm. He took me there. I saw the space. I thought we could put a theater in there. I went to the priest and said, would you let us have this? <laughs> these kids? I was 18 years old or something. And would did. you let us have the uh, basement so that we could do plays in there? And he said, sure. Oh, my God. And that's really where this institution now, I mean, look, you're going to Broadway and the West End and films and, I mean. Our first permanent theater was in the basement of a closed down Catholic school. Hmm. Yeah. It was a harbinger of things to come, Gary. How about that? <laughs> uh, now, th then you play, of course, Lieutenant Dan Taylor in Forrest Gump, years later, I'm fast forwarding. That role, it not only marked you in the minds of so many people because that was such a beloved role, but it also opened up a whole new world for you in the work that you're doing now. Yeah, I, I, have, uh, I have veterans in my family uh, and on my wife's side of the family, three Vietnam veterans, her two brothers and her sister's husband. Hmm. So back in the 70s and early 80s, I just got, I, I got this education from the Vietnam veterans in my family about mm -hmm. what it was like to be a Vietnam veteran coming home from war and how difficult that was for them to not only fight in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but to come home to this nation that was divided and turning its back on them. Mm -hmm. So I got involved with Vietnam veterans back in the, in the 80s, just trying to support them in the Chicago area. And then I moved out to California and I uh, was trying to get in the movie business. And I started auditioning for some things. And I did a couple of movies. And then along came the audition for Forrest Gump mm. to play a Vietnam veteran. 
So having spent the time with the Vietnam veterans and my family and others in Chicago mm -hmm. trying to help them, I very much wanted to play that part. And I went in and auditioned for it, and I got it. And uh, that was very, very fortunate because it changed a lot of things, mm -hmm. not only my acting career, but it, uh, it gave me an insight into our wounded that I hadn't had prior mm. to that and, I, and that I've, I've lived with ever since. Well, a lot of, I know a lot of the veterans, they saw you in that role and so identified with you. Did that open, was that really the catalyst that opened so many doors? I mean, because when Gary Sinise walked into Walter Reed or walked into a, 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 you know, a combat situation, it was Lieutenant Dan that walked in with him. In well, their minds. <clears throat> well, you know, there, there was, that was a time where my face was more well known than my name. Mm. Uh, people, because the movie was so. It's huge you know, movie. It was huge, everybody saw it. Yeah, you were nominated for an <clears throat> Academy Award. Yeah, and, uh, but not a lot of people knew who the guy was that played Lieutenant Dan. They just saw Lieutenant Dan. And mm -hmm. I, when I started going on USO tours and all of that, they started calling me that all the time. And, mm -hmm. and I'd go into the hospitals and go into these rooms with double amputees, and they'd want, to, want me to talk about that character. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then on 9-11, in the wake of 9-11, you tell the story of being at a church, and you felt a calling. Tell me about that. It was actually three days after September 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, September 11th was on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that Friday, uh, George Bush, the president, called for a national day of prayer to mm -hmm. happen on the Friday after September 11th. Right. So churches all over the country were just packed. packed they were filled. People. Everyone mm -hmm. was going to their churches just trying to find some, some healing, some, mm -hmm. something to to help, you know, deal with our broken heart. And mm -hmm. uh, I went to, to our local Catholic church. Um, and, you know, our kids had been going to the school there. And, mm -hmm. and I remember st standing room only. I was standing up on the side and they were singing God Bless America and everybody had tears. And I mean, it was very powerful, very moving. And our priest uh, was, was moving in his homily that day talking about service and how, uh, how service above self was very healing and that we all needed to try to, 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 to do something to help our country heal. Mm. And I heard that very specifically uh, that Friday after September 11th. And uh, that, I think, uh, galvanized something in me. And I just felt called by God to do something to help heal the men and women, you know, who were deploying in response to, mm -hmm. to that event. Once we started deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan and, right. and we started losing people, they started getting hurt. I thought that's where I can place my energy and that's where I can, mm -hmm. I can serve. I've been involved with Vietnam veterans. I don't want our active duty folks deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan to come home to a nation that treated them right. the way our Vietnam veterans were treated. So what can mm -hmm. I do to help? I can go out there and pat them on the back and visit them and do things. And I started doing everything mm -hmm. I could to just pitch in. And it all manifested itself into the creation of this foundation that yeah. I have now. Tell me about this RISE initiative that you have created. We have, um, we have five surviving quadruple amputees. Mm -hmm. uh, s service members have lost both arms and both legs. The first one survived a, a bombing in April of, of 2009. And I had a trip to go to Walter Reed to visit folks. Mm -hmm. My buddy who was over there called me up and said, we've got a quadruple amputee here. He's the first one to survive that injury. He's gonna be at Walter Reed. When you get there, go see him. Wow. So I did, uh, and uh, about a year later, I did a concert to raise money to build him a home. And in the meantime, we had several others come in with the same injury, losing mm. both arms and both legs. So we ended up uh, doing concerts to try to raise money to help build these houses. And these are and not just your run-of-the-mill house. This is, these are these houses are, that are really, they're, they're tricked out and, and accommodate yeah. their injuries. Once I started my foundation in, in 2011, we created a program to help build these homes, and that's our RISE mm -hmm. program, Restoring Independence 
supporting empowerment. We want to, they've had a lot of their independence taken away because they can't do things for themselves. Right. And when they're living in a house that isn't specifically designed to their needs, there are a lot of problems. They can't reach up to the cupboard right. or whatever it is. Yeah, they can't so get upstairs we, if they want So we to. put all kinds of stuff in these houses to allow them to take care of themselves so that their care, mm -hmm. caregiver, if it's their wife or their mom or dad or whoever mm -hmm. it is, can have a little more independence themselves and their mm -hmm. children. And so we provide these specially adapted homes and they're very nice homes. They're all specifically designed for them. We have one that's that uh, we're going to be dedicating on yes. Veterans Day. Tell me about Luis Avila, who you are going to be mm. gifting one of these houses, one of the houses your foundation has created, on Veterans Day. Luis I met at Walter Reed. Wow. And uh, Luis has a traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. a very serious traumatic brain injury. He's confined to a wheelchair. He's missing one leg. And he, when I first met Luis, he could barely lift his head up or make any sounds at all. Uh, to see him today and to see how far he's come mm -hmm. is really miraculous. I mean, I've known them now for four or five years, whatever it is, and they've been living in a rented house. Yeah. His wife, Claudia, is this amazing tour de force who mm -hmm. has fought for him every step of the way. and raising their kids and fighting for, for Luis to get him the care he needs. And um, I offered to, uh, to support them with the building of a specially designed mm -hmm. home just for them through our RISE program. And <clears throat> every, almost every day, <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. Almost every day I will get a, a photograph, a text from Claudia because mm. um, she goes to the house every day oh, to, to see check the, the progress. Here's the floors are in and now the thing oh. is in and now the doors are in and now the windows are in and look at this and look at that. I mean, they can't, they're busting at the seams. And this is, <clears throat> this is a family. Luis is, he's, he's made tremendous progress, but he's always going to need special care. care. You know, he's always going to need somebody to help him with something. So this special house will do something for this brave soldier who went out to defend our country, who... Five who, tours of duty. Yeah, I mean, you have to read his story. You can go to the Gary Sinise Foundation website, go to our RISE program page, and look, look up Luis Avila. Um, he's given so much. His family has given so much that to be able to give them... Mm -hmm. something back, give them a home that they can call their forever home where she can have all this support inside to help her care for him and where he can be a little bit more in, independent himself in there. And the kids will be able to grow up in there and come home. What a gift. Uh, and have room, uh, not be all crowded and cramped. It's going to be uh, just a real wonderful day to be able to see them get into their house. Tell me about this initiative that's happening. When I walked in, I walked into your offices here in California. There are, there, there are women, a guy, but mostly women, spouses of our vets and our, our deceased vets, the people who paid the ultimate price. Every so often you bring them together here. Why? Well, unfortunately, we have just thousands of military spouses who have lost a husband or mm -hmm. uh, a, a husband who's lost or a wife. wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certainly we've got uh, children who've lost fathers and mothers. So we have a lot of grieving military families of our fallen. And I'm involved in, you know, a couple of different very important initiatives that address the needs specifically of our fallen heroes mm -hmm. and the families that they've left behind, the survivors. Mm -hmm. One of those organizations is a great organization that's been around since 1994 mm -hmm. uh, called TAPS, mm -hmm. Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. It was start started by Bonnie Carroll when she lost her husband and there was no, there was nowhere to turn yeah. and so she started an organization just to, to help grieving family members of fallen heroes. I've had a great relationship with Bonnie and TAPS for many years. And I told Bonnie uh, that I wanted to bring a group out and just give them a good time here in Hollywood. N none of them had ever been here before. Mm -hmm. 
So getting out of their small towns around the country and coming to Hollywood and going to movie studios and meeting, you know, yeah. going to TV shows and doing different things, I thought would be just a, just a great burst of joy for them, which mm -hmm. they desperately need yeah. going through this grieving that they're going through. When we were last together, you talked to me about uh, in the 90s, you and your wife are driving along in a car in North Carolina trying to outrun a hurricane and she announces to you that she's converting to the Catholic faith. And that was kind of the genesis of your own journey to Catholicism. Has this been a faith journey for you, this foundation and the work that it requires and the people you've come in contact with? Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, you know, I could, I, I, I could say, 20, you know, 20 years ago when I did Forrest Gump, uh, I, I would have never uh, imagined that my life would have taken this turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad I've had the great success in the movie business that I have because it's given me resources to, to do something yeah. positive. It's all part of the service aspect of what our mm -hmm. faith teaches us. You know, service above self is so much a part of our church. And that you know, I, I, like I said, I could have never imagined that that's where I would be going. But I remember very specifically when my wife said, you know, her mom fell away from the church mm. when she was younger, so she wasn't raised Catholic. But at one point, my wife turned to me and said, I'm going to become a Catholic. I'm going through the RCIA program. When we get home, I'm going to go to the local <laughs> church and blah, blah, blah. And, and she, she did. did. She did all that. Mm. And so we had our kids go to Catholic school, which was a great thing for our family. We, we were going through some difficult times yeah. in those days, and the church was a great healer for, yeah. in many ways, and uh, it's been very important to our family, very important to me, and at a, a certain point, I just, you know, I, something happened, and I said, this is a calling. Mm. All this stuff that I've done prior to this, with the movie this business, the okay. television work, the theater company, the success I've had, this is what it's for. This, mm. the, it, it's to give something. It's to be able to, to um, educate folks about the importance of, of service, the importance of supporting our veterans. Mm. These are our defenders after all, yeah. and, and they need champions. Final question. After all these years, meeting with these wounded warriors, being with their families, I've always said actors are probably the most perceptive people on the planet because you're, 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 <clears throat> reading, you're reading things beneath the surface and on the surface. What have you learned from these people that you serve and work with every day? We have some extraordinary, extraordinary people that, in, that are serving our country. I mean, uh, the, the men and women that I have met in the hospitals, outside the hospitals, on the battlefield, uh, you know, uh, at military bases, going through training. I mean, some extraordinary people uh, at all levels. Yeah. Um, you know, I've met the, the, sure. the chairman of the Joint Chiefs sure. all the way down, you know, and everything the in petty between. Petty officers, and, yeah. And we have some remarkable folks, you know, at our academies, when you go to our academies, mm -hmm. And you see, you know, see the, young, the young people that have been accepted to those academies that are serving there and learning that are going to go on and be our future leaders. It gives you hope. It gives you uh, mm. comfort that we have a, a new, new generation of people that are going to be uh, our future leaders. That's, that's important. Mm. But also seeing what they go through just trying to face the challenges that they faced, especially our wounded and our gold star mm -hmm. families that are trying to get over th these tremendous challenges that they face because of their service yeah. uh, is humbling, it's inspiring, and it's motivating. It motivates me every day to keep mm -hmm. on this mission of trying to do something with what I've been given mm -hmm. to support them. You can find out more about Gary's work and his foundation by visiting Gary Sinise Foundation .org. Learn how you can help our nation's veterans and wounded warriors.